I've got behind me the brand new Meta from Unero. Nice red paint job. Very well put together frame. This is a brand new bike for 2024. They're doing things I was expecting was gonna happen. This is a torque sensor on the front bottom bracket. So we're seeing more and more of those on bikes under the $2,000 price range. These retail for $17.99. This is a 500 watt rear hub motor. Now just for my quick ride down the road here, I have a feeling it might have a little bit more than that. We'll find out later when we put it on the dyno. Running a front suspension fork, which doesn't have a name brand on it anywhere but it does have an adjustable lockout on it. Something that I've seen on more and more bikes and every time I ride a bike like this, I really like it, is that it's using 27 and a half inch wheels with some fairly wide commuting road style tires. So you get the benefit of low rolling resistance from the diameter and the type of tread. These ones are from Cao Yang. Oh, this one says one and a half millimeter hippo skin. That means I'm pretty sure these ones have like a little chunk of material inside the tread there to prevent thorns and nails and things in the road from causing you flats. So that's a nice touch to put these on the bike. But tires like this, these are 27 and a half by 2.6 inches wide. Uh, they have a decent amount of volume to them. So they really soak up a lot of the little bumps and things in the road. And even though overall you have a bike that is really designed for the street, it makes the ride really smooth. It's just nice. Integrated lights, front and rear. That's something that's a requirement for the California electric bike rebate that's coming up in the near future. So definitely something to pay attention to for that. Just got a small headlight built in on the front here. It is running, it looks like uh, 180 millimeter rotors with hydraulic brakes. It's Neuro's kind of own hydraulic brake setup. They don't really grab that well quite yet, so they're gonna need a little bit of braking in, but I think once the pads are broken in, they'll stop a lot better than it is. Coming around to the screen, it's fairly small over on the left-hand side, integrated with the buttons, uh, but it is in color, uh, really easy to read. I don't have full sun, it's kind of overcast right now, but it, I think this would be easy to read either way. And it looks like we get max speed, average speed, calories it might be actually calculating that because it has a torque sensor it knows how hard you're pedaling i haven't done much <laughs> ride time oh that's nice it does actually show the power in watts trip distance total distance you can see this is a brand new bike one mile on it we're just getting started and it has five levels of assist and this comes as a class two bike so you've got a thumb throttle on the left hand side of course, the torque sensing pedal assist. Let's see, what is this? This is a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, a nine speed Shimano Altus derailleur. So this is a, a step up. A lot of bikes are still using a freewheel. Some bikes, they're even just using a single speed, ditching the derailleur to cut cost. But this is a bike that is meant to be pedaled. Now it's got plenty of power, you don't have to pedal it if you don't want to, but I think this is something people would actually want to get on, get some exercise with, go have some fun with, and this just makes it easier to zip up and down the hills. So they're trying to make this a really good electric bicycle. This is not one of those other bikes I've reviewed where it's like, you don't really want to pedal this, this is a throttle only bike. This is a bike you can very comfortably pedal and you could probably ride all day long. These bars are swept way back and this stem set up here, this is adjustable so you could tilt this up so you're sitting as upright as you, realistically as upright as you could ever wanna be. And they're not putting a giant battery in it, at least not inside the frame. This is a 48 volt, 13 amp hour. Now that's a little bit smaller I would say than average for bikes in this price range, but you do have the option if you want more than that. I don't know if I can get this off with gloves. There it is. There's this plug built into the frame here for a second battery that can mount right here. 
So it's already wired up for a second battery and the second battery that can mount here instead of 13 amp hours is 17 amp hours. So you can easily put a total of 30 amp hours of capacity on this bike. That's gonna get you like 80, 100 miles range. But by putting the smaller battery as the first one and what comes with it, they can keep the weight down. They can keep this, like I said, a nice lightweight commuting bike. It's got a rack on the back, it's got fenders, it's got lights, it's got tires with some thorn resistance. Realistically, that's, everything you would need. Somebody on one of my other videos said, it's a step through bike and you didn't step through. So I'm, I'm stepping through. Because of the handlebars, the bars are fairly close. So I feel like this could fit a pretty wide range of riders. Probably down in the low five foot range, you might be comfortable on this. Up to, you know, maybe six foot, six two or so before your knees start getting too close to the handlebars. So I guess first off, let's see how well the assist works. Like I said, this is a torque sensing bike. So I'm, assist, I'm on assist one right now. So if I just very lightly pedal, I get a little bit of power. I'm going like six miles an hour. And if I pedal a little harder, there we go. I'm getting some more power. So the torque sensing is, I guess, what I would expect. Responsive, works, makes me stronger than I really am. Now, if I crank the assist up to five and give it a few pedal strokes, now I'm gonna just fly up this hill. We're at 16 miles an hour, 17, 18, 19, and 20 miles an hour is uh, the speed limit this is set to because it's got the throttle right here as a class two. And I'm gonna stop pedaling. Plenty of power to haul me up that little hill. That's not super steep. I'm gonna take it to one that's steeper, do a throttle only test and just see how well does this do up a hill without me putting any power in. I don't know if the camera being mounted way up there is gonna mess with the handlebars. Whoa, I think it does a little bit. Overall though, the bike feels really stable. If you haven't ridden a bike very much and you hop on a bike like this with a torque sensor, because it's reacting to how hard you're pedaling, if your pedaling input is not very smooth, like let's say you're, you're mashing on your right side and then your left side, but you're not doing a smooth rotation, you're gonna feel the power kind of jump up and down a little bit. So torque sensors, in a way, they teach you to pedal more smoothly. We just got up to 28 miles an hour down that hill and we're rolling along very smoothly. I need to break in these brakes a little bit more, so let's give it a nice hard stop. So it does stop quickly, but I kind of have to pull a little harder on the levers than I'd like to. So hopefully I'll, after a, a dozen more stops like that, the pads will start kind of biting a little bit better. It won't be so difficult. All right, so this is a nice steep hill. I'm going to stop at the bottom here and just hit the throttle. A little bit of a slow start. Eight miles an hour. Nine. Oh, eight and a half. Eight. Seven. This is really steep. This is tough for bikes to do. We're doing five and a half miles an hour. And that looks like it's gonna be about it. So I did it. Whoa. Need to tighten up my seat a little bit. I can't remember what the grade of that hill is, but it's uh, it's at least 10% figure with uh, me on here, 150 pounds, 155 pounds of stuff. Hello. So with 155 pounds or so of stuff on the bike, 10% grade, it can go up that just throttle only. That gives you a rough idea of, of power and what it's like if you go to a fat bike motor you can often get a bit more torque 
Obviously, if you go to a mid-drive, you can get a bit more torque, but this is about the most we see out of hub motors on commuter bikes like this. We'll verify it, like I said, on the dyno. They advertise this, again, as a 500-watt bike, but I do think this is probably doing 750 watts. In fact, I just remembered that the bike does show power in watts on the screen. I'm gonna turn around real quick. So if I go pedal assist one, it is giving me an extra, well, 400 some watts. Pedal assist two, 460 or so, a little bit more. So if I just hit full throttle from right here, 975, 1000 watts for a second there, 997, 996. So peak power pushing up a hill is actually about 1,000 watts. Now we're gonna lose a little bit of efficiency from the motor. So we're not actually getting 1,000 watts to the ground, uh, but I bet when we put this on the dyno, we get over 900. One of the things that I think that's worth mentioning about this bike is also not about the bike itself, but rather the company behind it. So the Unero brand, although I feel like may not be as well known, odds are you do know the people behind the brand, you just don't know it. I've been doing business with them for quite a few years, I've been a dealer for Unero, I have used them for manufacturing, and whereas we've seen a lot of e-bike companies, you know, close down, go bankrupt, or, you know, lay off people, I don't think that's a concern you have to be worried about with Unero. They're not one of these companies that just popped up and they're gonna disappear. The Unero brand's been around for a while, but the guys behind it have been manufacturing tens of thousands of bikes every year for various companies. So they not only make bikes for themselves, but they're making bikes for other companies too. And I know what some of those other companies are and that they're being quite successful right now. So. That's the good thing. I feel like they've got the experience in manufacturing bikes. They've been in the business long enough. Parts are gonna be available for a long time. Service is gonna be available. So I think you're safe to buy a bike like this and know that in three, four, five years from now, if you need a battery, a motor, controller, things like that, you should be able to get it. So I think if you're just gonna use a bike like this to get around town, do 10, 15, 20 miles of riding, then this is a perfect setup. If you wanna go a bit further, get 50, 60, 70, 80 mile rides in, definitely go for the second battery option because 30 amp hours total capacity is gonna give you, you know, like I said, 80, 100 mile range, I think on a bike like this. It's one of those bikes that when I look at it in pictures, it looks almost boring to me. So I feel like I wouldn't wanna buy it, but then every time I ride one, I'm like, oh, this, this is nice. I like this. I will have them available on our website at Area 13, but let's wrap this up with a quick dyno test and see how the power is. I'm gonna put this where my prediction is now that I've ridden the bike, right about here. So this is the mock wheel basalt, about 29 foot pounds of torque, 1,052 watts. And just below it, we have the Hao Chi Cheetah, 27 foot pounds of torque. 996 watts. Both of those are fat bikes, so in theory they might do a little better than that, but I'm just gonna take a guess and say this one ends up in between those. We'll see what it does. In three, two, one. Oh, I don't know if it's gonna have the torque numbers. I think the fat bikes are gonna beat it. I think it's got the wattage, but not the torque. 978 watts is not bad for something that is advertised as 500. And torque, almost 26 foot-pounds. That puts it just under what my guess was. So I was off by one. A couple of the fat bikes did beat it on torque, which makes sense. The motor design of fat bikes means the magnets are wider and they can just usually get a little more torque. So I'm not super surprised. That puts it right here above the Jan Snow and below the Hao Chi. 
which I think something to keep in mind is that both of those were advertised as 750 watt bikes. So it just goes to show that Unero is one of those companies that likes to kind of underrate things and over deliver. So if you're interested in the Meta from Unero, I've got this beautiful red one in stock right now. Come check it out at Area 13 or of course online as well.